On a brisk evening in early 2018, the dimly lit streets of a bustling city in the Middle East held a secret. In a modest apartment, hidden away from prying eyes, a man sits hunched over his laptop. In the online world, he is known only by his alias, the Phantom. This enigmatic figure is no ordinary individual. He's a mastermind in the realm of digital shadows, a mysterious Palestinian hacker who has become the subject of an intense and covert manhunt. As the night deepens, the rhythmic tapping of his keyboard echoes through the room. He's a ghost in the cyber world, slipping through digital nets cast by one of the world's most formidable intelligence agencies, Israel's Mossad. They've been tracking him relentlessly, their efforts spanning continents and cyberspace. Outside, the city sleeps, unaware of the high-stakes game of cat and mouse unfolding within its heart. Will this be the night when the hunter becomes the hunted? Or will the phantom once again vanish into the labyrinth of the internet, leaving Mossad grasping at shadows? Omar al-Balbazi, or as some know him, Omar A. This guy isn't just any hacker. He's pretty much a legend in the hacking world. Picture this. He's right at the top of Mossad's most wanted list. Yeah, you heard that right, Mossad. Israel's super secretive intelligence agency. They've been chasing him for ages. Why are they after him? Omar A managed to break into Israel's Iron Dome. That's their ultra advanced air defense system. Omar A, the famous Palestinian hacker, was hot on the radar of Mossad. They're tracking him down in places like Turkey and Malaysia. But here's where it gets really interesting. Turkey's National Intelligence Organization, MIT for short, steps in. They're like Omar A's personal bodyguards, offering him security. He dodges what could have been a real dicey situation, like we're talking possibly getting snatched up or worse in some high-stakes international operation. After a three-year deep dive, Israeli intelligence figured out that Omar A was the brains behind those crazy disruptions in 2015 and 2016 at the Iron Dome. And it turns out, he wasn't just causing chaos for fun, he was actually helping out Hamas's armed wing, the Al Qasim Brigades, to fire rockets over Israel. Omar's no ordinary hacker either. He's got a degree in computer programming from the Islamic University of Gaza, one of his big projects developing this super stealthy hacking tool for Gaza's interior ministry to sneak into Android phones. Now, this is where Mossad really starts paying attention. Omar lands on their radar as someone they've got to watch out for. So in 2019, they hatch this plan to lure him in. They dangle this sweet job offer from a software company in Norway. But Omar, he's sharp, he smells a rat, and figures Israel's behind the offer. So, he just flat out says no. He's as savvy about spy games as he is about coding. All right, so fast forward to 2020, and our guy Omar makes a move to Istanbul. But guess what? Mossad is still hot on his trail, not giving up the chase in Turkey, and with Omar's reputation as a top-notch hacker. Turkey's own intel, MIT, is keeping tabs on him too. Now fast forward again to April 2021, Omar gets this call out of the blue. It's a guy named Red Gazel claiming to be the human rights manager from a French company called Think Higher. He's got a job offer for Omar. Sounds legit, right? They even do a couple of interviews in Istanbul to sweeten the deal. Another dude, Omar Shalabi, claiming to be from the same French oil company, hits up Omar with a tempting offer, 10 grand to whip up some software for them. Yeah, you guessed it. Another Mossad agent playing the long game. These guys really aren't giving up on trying to reel Omar in. That French company? They actually paid Omar for the work he did. Yup, real money. Then, in June 2022, Omar gets yet another job offer. This time, it's from a guy named Nicola Radonich. It sounds like a scene from a spy movie, right? And get this. Nicola is actually a Mossad agent. The plot thickens, but Nicola isn't flying solo. He's got a crew with him, 
three other Israeli intelligence operatives, and they're all undercover, acting like they're just a bunch of developers. The location for this gig? It's a bit of a mystery. It could be Brazil or maybe Istanbul. So the Mossad crew, led by this Radonich guy, is really trying to reel Omar in. Their game plan? To get him hooked on working with them on some online projects. But here's the catch. Their real goal was to whisk Omar off to Tel Aviv for a bit of questioning. You know, the intense kind. Radonich's playing it cool trying to sweet-talk Omar into flying out for this project. And guess what? Omar's nearly buying it, thinking about saying yes. But then, just in the nick of time, Turkey's MIT swoops in with the ultimate save. They tip Omar off about the whole setup being a scam. Now, let me ask you, what do you think was the hacker's main motive? Was it political activism, personal vendetta, or perhaps a demonstration of skill? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing content like this. All right, so the Mossad agents, they're not the type to give up easily. Meanwhile, Omar A decides to take a break and heads off to Malaysia for a vacation in September 2022. But here's where it gets intense. The MIT Counterintelligence Unit in Istanbul is always a step ahead. They rig Omar's phone with tracking software, and they warn him, hey, watch out, you might get snatched up while you're abroad. And wouldn't you know it? Their warning was spot on. Just a few days into his Malaysian getaway, Omar gets grabbed in Kuala Lumpur. The next thing he knows, he's in this remote hut a whopping 50 kilometers away from the capital. That's like 31 miles in the middle of nowhere. Now, it gets even more movie-like. Omar's there, in this hut, and he's facing some serious heat. We're talking questioning and torture, and the suspects, they're believed to be Mossad operatives. Back in Tel Aviv, other Mossad agents are joining the interrogation, but they're doing it through a video call. So, there's Omar, stuck in this hut, and the Mossad agents are grilling him. They want all the dirt on how he managed to crack the Iron Dome and about that sneaky Android hacking software he cooked up. The whole situation's pretty intense, but here's where things take a turn. The Turkish authorities catch wind that Omar's being kidnapped. They're on it in a flash, reaching out to the Malaysian police. They put tracking software on Omar's phone, and they pinpointed his exact location. Now, picture this a high-stakes raid by the Malaysian security forces. They storm the place where Omar's being held. And guess what? They rescue Omar. In the process, they round up 11 people connected to his kidnapping. After his nail-biting escape, Omar A makes it back to Turkey. And guess who's there to help him out? The MIT. They set him up in a safe house, making sure he'd got a secure spot to chill. But that's not all they're doing. MIT, along with Istanbul's counter-terrorism police, are on another mission. They're tracking down this guy, Fod Osama Hijazi. It turns out, Hijazi's been working with Nikola Radonij. Yeah, the same guy from the Mossad who tried to lure Omar. It's like a spy thriller unfolding in real life. All right, so here's some more spy stuff for you. Before all this Omar A drama, Turkish security had already sniffed out Mossad's spy games in Turkey. Get this, media reports back in July said that Turkey's MIT had uncovered a massive ghost cell of 56 agents. And these weren't your average spies. They were spying on people who weren't even Turkish, all for Mossad. Now, the way they did it is straight out of a spy novel. These agents were using some high-tech tricks. They had this online system to dig up personal info on foreigners, track cars with GPS, hack into Wi-Fi networks, and even pinpoint private spots people hang out at. This cell wasn't just a bunch of randoms. It was made up of people from various Middle Eastern countries. They were crafty, setting up fake websites in several languages, especially Arabic to grab technical details and real IP addresses. As we reach the end of this digital odyssey, we're left with more questions than answers. 
What do you think about this mysterious hacker's story? Could it be a sign of a new era in cybersecurity and espionage? Share your thoughts below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of cyber mysteries, please hit the like button and subscribe for more fascinating content. Until next time, keep pondering the mysteries of the digital world.